Welcome back, my delightful to another Jujutsu Kaisen review. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the light bulb army. So let's get right into it. Yes, I forgot that the chapter came out yesterday. How did I forget that? I have no idea. Like yesterday, my mind was just messed up. I was thinking it was a different day and stuff. And then I, I just read the chapter today. But I have the chapter open just because we got a lot of information about the domains and all this stuff and we'll break it down right which gay gay breaks it down for us which is a great thing because sometimes they're talking about something i'm like okay i gotta read the chapter over again because the explanation might be complex and all this that's why i miss project manga shout out to project manga you know that was a podcast of great people that basically broke down jujutsu kaisen in a way that even though most complex chapters, even the uh, chapters with intricate, uh, power, the intricate power system, things like that, when they were explaining abilities, they broke it down simple enough that anybody could understand it. And, you know, I, I still miss their concept so much to this day. And I will say that they were the best content creators for Jujutsu Kaisen. And that's my personal bias. Well, it's not, yeah, that's not even advice because I was not part of the group. That's my personal opinion. All right, so let's get into it. So we have here, Gojo has the limitless curse technique, which makes him inviolable. In in, oh my goodness, inviolable. That's, you know, the craziest thing is I've never seen that word before, which basically Gojo cannot be touched with his cur curse technique. And Sukuna has tried neutralizing it with domain amplification. So we get a new thing. Well, not even a new thing. I, they said this has happened before. So domain amplification. It was in Mekumaru's footage. A special grade curse spirit used it against Gojo Sensei's limitless curse technique in Shibuya. It neutralizes Gojo's domain. But how? So with domain amplification, Go, uh, Gojo's domain is, is basically neutralized and Gojo can be touched. It's like my simple domain, only more developed. It neutralizes it neutralizes by using a domain that doesn't grant a curse technique in order to pour an opponent's curse technique into the empty space. So basically, they do domain expansion. It's like a simple domain, domain which I believe the Jujutsu Kaisen simple domain. I'm gonna look it up. The simple domain was created as basically a counter to domain expansion, if I'm not mistaken is an anti-domain technique that erects a small barrier around the user to protect them from the effects of a domain expansion. Yeah, so it, it used as a counter to domain expansion. So this technique is like a domain expansion, doesn't give the user any type of curse technique, and pours an opponent's curse technique into the empty space. So let's say Gojo uses domain expansion or a, a curse technique. That curse technique is basically instead of doing what it's supposed to it's just going in into this empty domain that that does the domain it's going into a domain that doesn't have any curse technique of its own like like they explained in this chapter it's like water just just i'm gonna keep reading like it's like it's not like water sorry sorry it's not that example that's that's not the right example they use it's basically like, let's say I use domain expansion, I have a guarantee hit or something, and, or I have Gojo's untouchable ability, that ability is just going somewhere else. And so I still could be hit, basically. That's the simplest way I, I think I could explain, explain it. Kusu Kabe, can you do that? Of course not. But I do have a sense of how it works. Then Angel says, the drawback to amplification is that you can not use it together with an innate domain. It appears that Sukuna is no exception. So Sukuna, you know, has his limitations like every sorcerer. Supposing there's so, but we gotta realize Sukuna is, is just hacks. So it doesn't matter if he has that limitation. Supposing there's a way for Sukuna to defeat the limitless curse technique aside from amplification, Gojo will lose. So if Sukuna has something else besides the main amplification to defeat Gojo to defeat Gojo's on uh limitless cursing me like gojo will lose that that's what angel says panda says does that mean he's practically he's he is practically without a curse technique and still holding his own against satoro so the moment with domain amplification activates 
So Kuna does not have any curse technique and still has to fight against Satoru Gojo. And Satoru Gojo is the strongest sorcerer, the strongest sorcerer in the whole entire world. And one of the strongest sorcerers of all time, by the way, be besides Sukuna. Because su before Sukuna became the king of curses, Sukuna was also a sorcerer. If that's the case, why, is it, why isn't Sukuna expanding a domain? Using a curse technique is difficult immediately after domain expansion. Then shouldn't Sukuna get into a clash of domains with Gojo? You make it sound it's you make it sound simple, but depending on the result, the fight will be over. Wouldn't that be a good thing? You're right. So then why? Y Yuji says, can a domain's guaranteed hit even pierce Satoru's curse technique? Actually, no. Yuji doesn't say that. Uh, another character says that. Yuji says he hinted it would that time a curse spirit's domain swallowed it. Mm. So the domain's guaranteed hit could pierce Satoru's technique of being untouchable. If it hits, if it hits, so that guarantee hit, if it hits, it, it, it could injure Gojo, mm -hmm. which <laughs> we saw what happened later on in the chapter, with, but I'm going to go from the very beginning. Could it be that Sukuna suspects he can beat Gojo in a domain clash? Given Gojo's devious personality and six eyes, I doubt he failed to notice that. And if he suspected it, he had deployed his domain first. Then perhaps there won't be a domain battle. Based on what Inomaki and Yuji said, I don't think Sukuna closes barriers when opening domains. All right. This is the craziest thing right here. Every time a domain is used, every time domain expansion is used, the barrier is supposed to be closed. They mentioned Megumi's uh, Chimera Shadow Garden, which is Megumi's domain expansion, which is an incomplete domain because some of the barrier is not closed. And everybody's just shocked. They're like, huh? Isn't that impossible? Yes, it is. It's impossible. At least I think it is. So it's likely totally impossible. All right. So this is a good thing. The good explanation. The simple one. Miss, toss me some water. Okay, here you go. Why do you do that? Huh? You told me to. I asked for water. I don't need the bottle. So she basically sprays the water in his face. That's what it's like to open a domain without closing a barrier. So the domain... If it's open without opening the barrier itself, it just just goes over where goes everywhere. It's it's not controllable. Let me look, domain expansion. I'm actually motivated to bring you this video because I almost was like, let me let me skip this chapter, but I didn't. Why, why is it it's just, showing up a, a picture of UG doing domain expansion? It's like a figure. Not even official figures. What in the world? Okay. Domain expansion is an advanced barrier technique and is considered the pinnacle due to sorcery. It constructs the user's innate domain inside a barrier infused with their innate curse technique. Within the domain expansion, the user's curse techniques are improved and any that are activated are guaranteed to hit. So not only is there a guaranteed hit, but curse techniques are also improved. So they're, they're stronger, basically. Important. It constructs the user's innate domain. The domain is is inside of a barrier, right? Which we, we have seen many times before. Sukuna's so domain is not inside of a barrier. It just overflows. That's why later in the chapter, <laughs> like when Sukuna uses do, his domain, it just it's just out the barrier too. It, it's out the barrier because Gojo uses his domain expansion. And Sukuna's domain is just so massive, right? Let's keep reading. Is it possible to hold water without a vessel? Can you paint a picture in the air without a canvas? Do flowers bloom from a seed without root, leaf, or stem? So this is what is this is how impressive Sukuna is, because he's doing all of this. He's creating a domain without the barrier to contain the domain itself. It'd be like running software without hardware. Anyway, it's impossible. Megumi's unfinished domain didn't shut the barrier. I heard about something like that before promotion assessment, but that involved using buildings and existing barriers as external shells. This is on a far higher level. So before this was done before, but the buildings and existing and barriers that are already there were used as the barrier itself of the domain expansion. But Noritoshi Kamo Kenjaku did it. Sukumo resisted with simple domain. Meaning, meanwhile, Tengen dispelled a domain with a barrier technique from outside. The simple domain got stripped away, but if Sukumo, which Sukumo was the one that had the, that cool, like, black hole technique, 
one of the strongest female sorcerers in the entire series, by the way. Uh, but if Sukumo had been holding on, holding an open domain. Uh, that, okay. All right, let's read this again. Okay, so Sukuno resists. This was the fight be between Sukumo and Kenjaku. I doubt a clash of domains will result because it amounts to a clash with the barrier's outer shell. So a clash of domains will result because it amounts to a clash with the barrier's outer shell, but it probably resulted in a struggle involving the curse techniques guaranteed inside Yuki's domain. A struggle between what? I don't know. Maybe guaranteed hits. Guaranteed hits come with the barriers, so it had to be the barriers. We're talking about domains like they're no big deal, but they eat up tons of cursed energy, right? So you can't do them lightly. Fish flakes. Inumaki's right. Gojo Sensei will never run out of cursed energy. That's because his cursed energy efficiency is extraordinary, isn't it? He controls consumption through a constant self preservation. So basically, think of Gojo's <laughs> cursed energy. It's not infinite, okay? It's, it's basically. Gojo's curse energy is just would you say it's infinite? It just keeps flowing. <laughs> Basically, because it's preserved. It's like a, a, a dam holding the water. That's like Gojo's curse energy. But uh, that assumes regular functioning, right? I bet it'd be di different if he want he was to consecutively open domain. So if Gojo kept opening domain, the energy his curse he still have a lot of curse energy, but it will not be contained as well. What about Sukuna? He's like a god. He activates curse techniques and switches between amplification and innate technique quickly. If Gojo didn't have six eyes, Sukuna would have would even best him in curse energy efficiency, which is a big thing. Uh, definitely signifies Sukuna's abilities as a the king of curses because Gojo has to have all of this. Has to have six eyes just to even be a match for Sukuna and. He says if, if Gojo didn't even have six eyes, Sukuna will be better than him in curse energy efficiency and managing curse energy basically as well, which is, you know, Sukuna is no pushover. Sukuna still needs, I think, one more finger to be at 100%. But Sukuna, at this point, we could just assume he's at either 90, I would say 95% of his power. He also has more overall curse energy than I do. My hunch is twice or more. So it's not like they wouldn't open their domains due to the lack of cursed energy. Maybe nobody, including those two, knows what happened if their domains clash. Yeah, and here it comes. Domain expansion. Oh, this was such a cool panel. I really like the art. It, it's amazing. You know what this reminded me when this domain expansion happened? It definitely reminded me of Naruto versus Sasuke at the rooftop. Uh, you remember, you, have you ever watched Naruto? When they were on top of the hospital, the first time they clashed with, well, not the first time, one, one of the times they clashed with the Rasengan and Shidori, it was so cool. For some reason, that's what this panel reminded me of. So the domain expansion happens, the barrier is created, two domain expansions are going to clash, which we have seen that before. So we have Sukuna's domain expansion, actually Sukuna's domain expansion, not Chimera Shadow Garden. The clash was even. Inside Gojo's barrier, the two can't miss commands overlapped and canceled each other out. So basically, Gojo's domain expansion has, creates the barrier. They both clash. Both techniques are canceled. The guarantee hits that Sukuna is supposed to have with his domain expansion. And the one that Gojo is supposed to have with his domain expansion is like, both sparks, boom, they just cancel. They neutralize each other. They fought with both their domains open. If one takes heavy damage or one of their domains collapses, the other's guaranteed hit will immediately strike. So basically, whoever takes the damage or whoever's domain uh, collapses first, they basically lose, right? And then we, that's an even match, for real, it can be. By the way, everybody's watching this fight as it's happening, inside a barrier. But the effective range of Sukuna's domain reaches outside the exterior of Gojo's domain. So basically, Sukuna's domain overpowered Gojo's domain because Sukuna's domain is just hacks. And we gotta remember that Sukuna's domain is created without a barrier itself, so it reaches even more. So, boom, Sukuna wins the, the domain expansion uh, battle here. 
And back to this, it says, if one takes heavy damage or one of their domains collapses, the others guarantee hit will immediately strike. So Sukuna's guarantee hit will strike because of this. Does the domain's barriers, it's weak against attacks from outside. Does the, the, the barrier itself is weak from attacks from outside. We see the barrier actually cracking, right? I, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Sukuna's domain it just looks so badass. It looks so badass. And boom. Domain broken. The entire barrier is broken, right? Sukuna's domain is still open without a barrier. It, it's just flowing. And Gojo doesn't have his domain open no more, meaning that Sukuna gets his guarantee hit. And Sukuna smiles, and Gojo's neck looks like it gets sliced. Now, his head doesn't... It doesn't roll off or anything like that, so we don't have to be scared about that. But Gojo definitely did take heavy, heavy, heavy damage from this because domain expansions guarantee hit hurts, and then domain take uh, curse techniques are amplified in, when the domain it, it occurs as well. And Gojo getting slice shows what Yuji said earlier in the chapter is true that he hinted it would. It would that time your curse pierce domain swaddled up. Can a domain basically a domain's guarantee hit can pierce Gojo's untouchable technique, basically untouchable curse technique, and Gojo gets sliced in the neck. Is Gojo dead? No, but I definitely do think he will be heavily injured, and I definitely do think it is a good time for everybody to either teleport over there and help Gojo, because they cannot. I'm telling you, they cannot afford to have Gojo die. They cannot. Even if all these sorcerers uh, team up together against Sukuna, we got to realize Sukuna is not heavily injured or anything like that right now. Like the only way I will see them all winning, like teaming up together, you and everybody else, is Sukuna took a heavy blow from Gojo. And then Gojo took one as well, and then they show up to help Gojo. I think that's the only way, but uh, that is definitely not the case. We still have Kenjaku on the loose, Kenjaku the little, the little rat. That little rat scrolling around and stuff like that. We, we, we still got to deal with him and stuff. So overall, I definitely really did enjoy this chapter. It is good. I went over the chapter again, got a better understanding than the first time around. Sometimes you got to read a chapter multiple times to get a better understanding of it. And yeah, Sukuna is just a monster. A, a monster in all the sense of the word. Overall, I'm giving this chapter a perfect score of a 10 out of 10. This was actually trending on twitter i've seen for the past couple of days well not like past two days i kept seeing gojo trending i didn't want to click on it like subconsciously you know what's funny i didn't want to click on the thing gojo trending i didn't even like yesterday i didn't even think to think all oh, the chapter came out i just saw gojo trending i'm like i'm not clicking on it because i i don't like spoilers but my brain unconsciously is like don't click on that don't spoil yourself of a chapter you forgot came out yesterday but you know you got the review today it's better to get the review than no review plus this one was a long one so you know you're playing the video games you're bored at home you're bored at work you're bored doing whatever you want you're like like one films made a video that i want to watch thank goodness like some entertainment for a little bit hope you enjoy this one and remember to have a great day peace